said, she doesn't look like it. She was a model, but she'll fight you. But she'll fight you. Shit, she'll fight you. Yep. But she'll fight you. But she'll, 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 she'll fight you. But she'll fight you. Nine millimeter with three magazines. Mason at first. Nine millimeter, nine millimeter with three magazines. Nine millimeter with three magazines. Mason at first. She had a balanced knife in her bra. I don't know what she's carrying. We're back, y'all. This is Anna's Global History. Let's do this. We're back. Global History Night. Back on Radio for the World next. Very uh, soon, which is very awesome. We will awesome. be on both at the same time. Yes. Yes. Which is very, very cool. I know, because people, because when I tell people I have, a ra- I have a radio show, it's cool to say that it's Radio, radio for the world. Radio, radio, radio. Exactly. Da, da, da. Just streaming, on, just streaming on YouTube isn't quite isn't quite the same. And I am on the same station, the same channel with Duck Soup, the brother show. Yes, Duck right. Soup. Duck Soup. That's right. That's right. Where's Age? Shout out to Age Scott. Yes. Osai. Osai. Boondocks. Everybody. Yes, my boy Thug Nasty. Yes, Thug Nasty, man. Where are you been? Yeah, I know, huh, man? Yeah, Thug Nasty, where you been? I I have see. I told Thug Nasty I got a business proposition proposition for him, but I have to I have to tell him in person. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to get down here, Thug. Thug Nasty, you gotta get here, man. That's right. Okay, so Bobby Wine is um, still alive. He there's he, there's a tri- a trial. Remember, because um, Musavani put on Yoeri Musavani put did a so put on a social media tax which means it's very hard for anybody to communicate and also held he's being accused of holding a public meeting without giving notice to any authorized officer shit (laughs) that's what you call an oppressive government guys um so he is afraid for his life but he is out there trying to work for work for freedom so we are thinking about you mr bobby mr bobby wine It'd be great if you came here came here to do a show okay so one of the things we started talking about last time was gangster movies yes we were we were we yes, were. we were. Yes, we were. And I went ahead and rented the three and a half hour movie called gangster movie called Once Upon a Time in America. I've heard of that. I haven't seen that yet, but I've heard of that. Is it good? You heard about it from me? Did you yeah, hear about it? Yeah, I think it was from you, but I think yeah. I've seen it. I just remember the name. Was it written yeah. kind of weird, like like in old English or something? Like no. the title? No, but I no, I think you've heard of it because I heard about it. Through just in, being interested in gangster movies, so I that's why I was asking last time if you if you'd heard about it because I figured if I, um, but it's about Jewish gangsters basically. It starts off in so it's like early twentieth century or something, and so it starts off. It's one of those things where it traces people's lives about this group of Jewish boys that kind of do petty crime and it takes place in the early 20th century. And so the filming and the cinematography, it's really amazing visually. So they roll drunks and stuff like that. And then one of them should talk about like juvenile crime. Um, get sent to jail that he stabs a policeman and gets sent to jail for 12 Ooh. years so that's Robert De Niro plays as an adult so basically he gets sent to jail and comes out as Robert De, as Robert De Niro oh nice yeah yeah and, and then it made me think of American Me that's what happens in American Me. Yeah, it is. He goes to jail. He goes to jail when he's a kid. Yeah, but American Me is more modern. Well, yeah, 
I mean, it's, I it's. I think. I think. I don't know. I think to, to me, it's weird. I think when you go to prison or jail, then yeah. back then, it was different. Well, now it's more. Okay, it's just the okay. It's I see what just you're saying. I see what you're because saying. he comes because he comes out and he doesn't know how to relate to people. Yeah, it's basically. The, yeah, that part is the that same. part. I get you. Okay, okay yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay. It stunts your growth. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, it's just one of the things that's really interesting to see connections like that. So, I mean, so it's pretty tragic because, you know, I mean, shit, you think it's bad now. You know, I mean, back in those days, I, I don't think really think it's not like he would have had any rehabilitation or education right. or anything. So, he gets out. He never shows his family or anything. And his gang picks him up they've all grown up in that time except one of them it shows one of them gets killed um when he's a little kid and by the gangsters that are they do something you know they're kids they they don't want to work for the neighborhood boss anymore they want to strike off on their own and they do and the neighborhood boss comes after them so yeah that's Reminded me of that, and he just doesn't know how to relate to people. He doesn't know how to do anything else. So it's really, really violent. And one of the things they do is they want to go after this crooked cop, or a, a cop. You could say a cop that's not crooked enough because he doesn't right, do any, right, what right. they want, and they. Have him. Um, there somehow the cop says on the new. You know, there's like reporters and stuff around. The cops going to the hospital because his wife just had their fifth kid and it's a boy after four girls. So it shows wow. him in the hospital going blah 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 blah. You know, it's a boy, it's a boy, and his wife is like, and she's like, the girl. You know, here's these like four little girls sitting there with his. With their dad, like, being so excited because he finally has a boy. And he's, nah, he goes, I'm like, oh, I love you. But then, so somebody brings in, brings in the baby. He's holding up the baby. And he's like, he is going to be the boss of the house after <laughs> me. <laughs> like, nah. and, but then, see, this was the thing was, like, made back, back in, the se in, the se in the 70s or 80s, I think. And there must not have been laws there. He undresses the baby and sees that it's a girl, the baby. And it was really, I was like, damn, 80s? It's like, you don't need to, like, show, you don't need to, like, fix your camera on the little naked baby, his, <laughs> you know. Um, but so the gangsters have gone into the nursery, because in those days they didn't, like, have babies with their moms in the hospital. They'd have them all in a nursery. Right. And so they go and switch all the babies it's so fucked up wow yeah and so then so he's like the cop is freaking out and he gets a phone call and he's like where's my boy and they're saying they're saying like okay well do this and we'll let you know which baby they switched all the little name tags that is evil isn't that evil yeah that is woo. and they didn't even do it with just two babies they did it with all the babies yeah. That was back so, when I hate to say it, that was back when gangsters were smart. I mean <laughs> I mean it was crazy, but they were a little bit more you know, they got they did some stuff that you'd be like, Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I would have never thought to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. They dressed up as doctors and went in and did Man, it. Yeah, that is evil. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, they would have the, the parents probably would have got rather have gotten shot than to have to deal with that. Well, I think, do it. How are they gonna know what their kids are? How well, that was they, how do they how do the gangsters? Well, there was supposed to be a list, but the, yeah, that's the thing. Then they realized that the dumb gangster, the dumb, you know, sort of like the dumb guy in the group, lost the list. See what I'm saying? And so, so they just, so they lied, like, so I guess they managed to like say which boy was his but there's a scene where the guy one of the guys goes like well what about all the rest of the babies? like well life's all chance life's full of chances so people just took home babies that might not even be there yeah that's messed up 
Yeah. That's so wrong. Yeah. You'd think, like, okay, I was trying to figure out, like, okay, well, what, like, say if you have, you could have, like, the parents come in, like, one by one and say which baby they thought was theirs and then, like, try and... I mean, how far off is a baby at that moment, though? Aren't they, don't they all, unless they're, like, a different color, I guess, you know. Well, that would be one thing. You know, if it's a black baby, I mean, that would help, but... I think, I, I think, I think the hospitals were segregated. Okay, so you're so, screwed, you're screwed then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because like people say, all baby, all babies look Ooh, alike. Oh, that's a bad. Isn't that situation. bad? You know, because yeah, they were especially talking about like, man, what what if like a rich, what if especially like what if a poor baby's fam, what if a poor baby's if a baby from a poor family got switched from to a rich family? Yeah, yeah. Because because one of the gangsters said like. Well, I wish I'd been switched. And somebody else says, well, maybe you were. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did. Hey, yeah. Hey, it could have been done to them. They don't know. Yeah. I mean, now it's real, you know, that like now, I mean, you they know. They can pull a DNA test, but even still. Not in those days. I'm not talking about now. But yeah. Well, now, I mean, you know, they still, like. They still like they're real strict. Stuff. You know, they. Everybody, you come in the hospital, you know, they'll put a band on the mother's right. wrist. And, you know, as soon as that baby, they probably don't even wash the baby before they, like, snap a little thing on right. its wrist. They're That's real soon. Yeah. That's evil. I never even thought about someone doing something like yeah, that. Yeah, man. They were not That's fucking evil. around back That's then. Evil. Yeah. That's evil. Yeah. It's really evil. <laughs> Well, oh well. Speaking okay. Speaking of getting switched, um, there's a case that I followed. Um, something I read about where there's this guy who was he's about he's a little older than me. He's 55, and he so in 1960 or something, he was this baby was kidnapped from the hot from the hospital. And so, and he was missing, missing for two years, and then an abandoned baby was found in a shopping mall or something, and the FBI figured this must be that missing baby and gave him to the family. And, you know, they'd gone through their baby, so, you know, they basically, you know, their baby was kidnapped and they get a two-year-old back, and when the kid was ten... I think when he was a little older, they told him they told him about it, and then like a couple years ago, he took a, but he felt like there was something wrong. He took a DNA test, and first he asked his family if they could do the DNA test, and they did it, but his parents didn't. Then his parents changed his mind and said like, "We don't want to know." But anyway, he did the DNA test, and found out that he wasn't his parents' child. He was somebody else. They just, like, so... <clears throat> so then he was trying to figure out, like, okay, well, if I'm not my parents' baby, then who, who is? Where's the, where is their baby? I mean, so just because... So he had, like, two things to try and find out. He wanted to try and find out who he was... And where was the other kid? So he found out, so like through the DNA testing and all that, he found out that he, he found his biological family and he found out that he'd had a twin sister who'd also disappeared. Twins. Like, so there were people and his relatives that remembered him and his little sister and then, right. they, then they, were just, they were just gone one day. So he found out that he wasn't his parents' child, and then he found out that he's missing a twin sister. So that happened about two years ago. Family wouldn't the adoptive family. They first they were estranged with him for a year. it was. It's just the sort of thing where you say like nobody wins. I mean, it's not like it's just it would just be really really confusing because here's the people that raised you and loved you and it, I mean the parents didn't want didn't even want to know at first right. but so just recently so I remember reading that story and then just recently he found 
the original baby that had been kidnapped. The, so he, um, and that person is remaining anonymous there his because he's a crime victim and so basically you know this person they found this person and he hasn't met the biological parents yet he's just kind of figuring out what what he wants to do and so no, nothing's really known about him like okay well if um like okay they like okay well then who kidnapped him and they have an idea on who may have kidnapped him but they just don't know so isn't that yeah but yeah but especially you know I mean, back in those days there was no dna testing that's crazy mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's really crazy now what they're fucking doing on the border is making parents and children have dna tests to be re reunited but that's but then that's so fucked up because it doesn't show adoptive parents. Right, true, true. And also the problem is they confuse cuz with the border issue, they talk about trafficking. They say like, okay, well, people are being trafficked and that's why we need to separate people. And that's, you know, what's pointed out it's like, okay, the when you see a parent and a child, when people cross the border, the default isn't Oh, they're being trafficked that's but also the problem is if people a lot of people do give their children to relatives or somebody to cross the border so this person it could be an aunt or relative so this person I mean it's they have legitimately been entrusted with this child by their parents and they're the person that that child knows and yeah some of them are traffickers but some of them are just going to be other relatives so yeah now like people have been pre prevented from they're not even allowing doctors to go in and give those migrants flu shots so people are dying of completely preventable things so yeah that that's just that's just crazy but it's also you know getting back to the the concept okay getting back to like going to the state of, Is, of israel um okay there's this concept where um any jew can go get citizenship in israel and no problem you know there's like um refugees who cannot get a hearing there's um migrants whose wages are being garnished just because they're mi migrants but if i wanted to go move to the state of israel i could and that's what my niece is doing and you know it's no problem but my brother is going and finding the paperwork for her mom's conversion my brother's wife ex-wife converted to marry him and like be, since judaism and by the mother so you know all that stuff's important to my brother so that's what he would have wanted and i was like okay well i guess they got their money their money's worth since now my niece does want to become israeli but that's the problem <laughs> that I have with it. Th this idea that your blood and your DNA determines who you are. And so one of the things that's supposedly happening is there are people who are needing to get DNA tests that show that they're Jewish in order to become Israeli citizens. So that's just creepy. It's creepy all around. And, you know, so far as, so that just reminded me of it, them doing DNA, DNA tests yeah. at the border. Okay, so movies, um, that was a little so bit. So was that the only movie. gangster movie you went to see was, uh, did you see any other ones? It's it was three and a half hours. Well, yeah, that is a long movie. That is a long movie. That's like watching The Godfather. Yeah. So, but okay, it made me think like, okay, what are some classic 
because the thing about somebody going like what like some classic gangster things or mafia things are people being immigrants like the attack like attack you know that's the supposed reason that people become gangsters somewhat is to get power and status and money in a new in a new country because immigrants are treated really badly and get shitty jobs so i mean that's why there that's why there were jewish gangsters that's mm -hmm. why there were italian italian gangsters you know and so right. so um it's interesting to look at the to look at those sim at those similarities so um what was the what's the name of the guy in american me Edward James. No, Pope. the character. The main character. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember what he called himself. Yeah. I just know his name, Edward yeah. James Holmes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what yeah. he called himself. Okay, because yeah, well, he wound up being sent back to prison, and then the Robert De Niro character did not wind up being sent back to, sent back to prison. But um, yeah, it was pretty awful and violent and miso misogynist. What I real sort of. You know, and I don't, it's not that I think you shouldn't show violence against women on movies. I mean, you know, it happens and yeah, if that's going to be a part of your movie, go ahead. I'm not against that. But you don't need to make it like last five minutes, you know. I was like going into, you know, so I just like, I can't watch that sort of stuff. So I just was like going in the, going in the other, in the other room. I was like, damn, man. How long is this going to go on? So, well, that's kind of what I consider like gratuitous misogyny and misogyny and violence. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm not somebody that, that I would never sen believe in like censoring material. It's not that I think that you shouldn't show violence at all. Right, right. It happens. That's true. But I'm telling you, with American Me, yeah. that is oh. the best prison movie well yeah of the truth that yeah I just, man it's yeah very truthful yeah i recommend i recommend it to people all the time i mean because yeah i mean i i certainly i mean i and yeah i certainly i hear that from people that have re that have reason to know and yeah i sent it, another one of my relatives was supposedly going to go work in some area with gang members and I sent her a um <laughs> I sent her a list of movies I thought of movies I thought she should watch and that was number <laughs> one you know I don't, I don't I don't think she I don't think she did but you know I mean I just think it's it's one of the themes that we have here is how important film is in books to learn about people I saw that film long time ago and it really educated me it really I think about it I think about it a lot it really helped me understand the world better and understand people better so okay gangster movies prison prison movies I was trying to think like okay what are some of my I'm not the hugest god godfather fan actually but I love the I love the usual suspects I love our dogs what are some other good ones oh man what's oh shit what's the one where um wait it's not the same the one where the guy's an artist it's not american me it's another one it's another latino one you're talking about bound by honor bound by honor <laughs> yes and the the brother turned out to be an artist yes one of the brothers because he got shot or something he got hurt or something yeah. happened to him yeah, and then one of them is one of them is an undercover cop. Remember that? No, he turns into a cop. He wasn't an undercover, was he? Yeah, he goes undercover. I thought the brother was just he turned into a normal cop. Well, maybe he turned into a normal cop after he was an undercover cop. But yeah, there's a scene where um, it shows him. You know, he has like long hair and. Um, God, it sounds quaint now because I think he's just busting people for weed. But um, yeah, yeah, bound by honor, and that 
by honor. That's a well, that's another real classic one. Yeah, because I I think one brother goes to prison and one of them is a cop and one of them is an artist, right? Or their cousins or friends too. They aren't all. I think they were all. There was the the main character was the cousin. The other two were brothers. Okay. One of the brothers in the gang got shot, and so he became a good artist. Yeah. But he had a drug problem or something was wrong with him. Yeah, yeah. And the other brother became a cop. He wasn't necessarily an undercover cop, but he was a cop. But he he was an undercover. There's a scene where he goes undercover. I don't remember him being undercover. He was, man. I remember him being his cousin and stuff, and his cousin knew he was a cop. No, he goes undercover. Okay. Because part, that's part of the problem. I got yeah. I, I ain't seen. I ain't seen that one. I ain't seen that one in a long time. So I yeah. See it, well, for some reason, I really remember because that was part of the you know whole complex. I think because somebody who it's a scene because I I think that was part of because yeah he's undercover. Then I think somebody recognizes him. So yeah, okay, but that's another one. That's another real good classic gangs gang prison one. I might need to go rewatch that one. Yeah, I mean, I've seen American Me a couple times, but Bound by Honor. Okay. I get Bound by Honor mixed up with Down by Law. Sounds sort of, sounds sort of similar. <laughs> I've never seen Down by Law. Really? It's pretty intense. Okay, so that's another... Okay, but... Why? Okay, that's kind of, kind of like another classic thing about gangster movies. It shows them... It, so many of them start with, start when people are in childhood. Well, they they try to. I think some movies are trying to show you how. It's, Mike. Huh? Mike. Yeah, some of them tried to start. They tried to show you how it started from the beginning to the end. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also kind of a classic. I think they also do it to show the American part. So, but that's just, I guess that's just how it works down here. It's always been kind of the same situation, so. But that's what, um, wait, Godfather, does Godfather start with their children? Yeah, but I don't think they focused as much on the children part of it. Yeah. It started when he was younger, but I think it was more when he was in his, like, 20s. Yeah. It wasn't as much focus as the, the newer movies started focusing on more when they were kids. So you kind of understand why they got into the gangs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But. American Me went even further. I showed the grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. The grandparents with the zoot suit thing. Yeah. That went a little further. That was cool, too. Yeah. You know, if you didn't know about that, now you kind of understand. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Yeah, it definitely shows, this piece, shows that, piece, that piece of history. And, yeah, I remember the scene. Yeah, the, I remember some of it really. Like, the scene where they go to a store and he loses it because somebody makes him wait. That's an American Yeah, because yeah. he's, he's, he's not used to having yeah. to deal with that because he's been in prison for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah he just doesn't yeah. know how doesn't know how to deal with people. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, yeah, it's hard when they get like that. That's what happens. Technically, once they get there, it seems like time stops for them. It's kind of funny. I mean, it's not funny, but it's mean. funny. Yeah. Because you'll see guys that are like 50 years old, and they're dressing like they're 19 years old. And it looks, to me, it looks weird. It just looks, when you see him, it looks weird because you're looking at this guy was old enough to be almost your dad. Yeah. But he's dressing like a kid from the 90s. It's just weird. Well, yeah. And then they don't like they don't know how they don't know how to have romantic relationships. They don't know how to relate to Yeah. Nope. Yeah, they don't know how they, to relate to they, people. They they pretty much top time. They were before they came in. That's kind of how they Stay relationship wise. You know, yeah. They, some of them, if they was messed up dudes, they come out messed up dudes still the same way, just older. Yeah. Yeah. Argument we were ha earlier. I was talking with some parents about um, Vallejo schools. I find I like to do that since I live since I don't have kids and. I like to find out what the schools are like here. And then a couple of weeks ago, I, I went out to one of the schools to talk to the kids about volunteering at the food bank, at the food pantry where I, where I volunteer. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of because first I went out there with this lady that wasn't that familiar with um, the whole thing. And 
My thing was, I am trying to think of as many things that could be beneficial to them as possible. So one of the things I was telling them was that the youth, a lot of, this is Faith Food Friday, a lot of um, politicians and community leaders come through. So we always have the youth meet them. And sometimes people from Faith Food Friday will like be going up to the Capitol to lobby for different food programs. And I said, you know, you guys can do that. And I said, okay, I was like, okay, you can go do like I was there with a the table talking about Faith Food Friday and I was like saying you can do stuff like this too so you get experience talking to people I was saying you know you get experience working in a real busy place I was just trying to think of everything you know I was like these are like kids in Vallejo man they need all the advantages and stuff they can get and the other lady that was there first she was saying well it feels really good to help the needy and I I said, don't, you can't say that. There's kids here whose families come to the food bank. And then she kept saying, I was going on that, and I just was saying, you know, we really want you guys to have a good experience. And she, so she was on this track. So she stopped saying the needy, but she kept saying, oh, and it feels wonderful to help your community. And I'm just like, that's not my business to be talking about that. I mean, wow. yeah. Yeah, I am not, that's something their parents can talk to them about, but I don't know these kids. I'm not going to be talking with them about their feelings and stuff like that. I mean, I'm there to talk to them about experience and opportunities. Right. But yeah, so it was cool to see what the school was, was like. Then there's an issue about shutting down closing some of the schools because there's declining enrollment. So there's a bunch of schools that have like empty classrooms. And so the, the um, school district wants to shut down some of the schools and sell the property and get some money. Whoa. Well, the, they, which is smart. The Vallejo schools went bankrupt and several years ago and the state bailed them out. So now they're paying the state back and they need they need more, they need more money and so the and so i was asking some of the parents there so some of them you know they're saying i want the school closed i was like so i said like okay well which school do you want closed because my i just felt like okay a lot of y'all don't want your kids school closed just because but okay and so one of saying like no I don't want any he was saying that he doesn't want any of the schools to be sold because the money will be put right into prisons he's going like if you shut schools you build prisons I was like well that doesn't quite work that work he was just listening to the show and I told him he could come on sometime but <laughs> I was saying it doesn't work that way that's not like you know I, I know as well as you do about the school to prison pipeline but it's not like the school district if the school district gets some money, it's not like the prison system is going to come take it. And the school, getting, the schools need more money. And I was saying, you know, my God, I mean, mm. more, hire more teacher's aides, fix up, fix up the gyms. I mean, everything. So that was my attitude. I was like, okay, con consolidate the schools and put more... Put, put them together and he was going like well, so yeah we were ha we were having that that discussion I was saying like no I mean I'm like saying the opposite I'm saying that they should do something to get money to make the schools better and there was actually a big bond that was passed two years ago was supposed to be making physical improvements to the schools and so Somebody was saying it doesn't matter, and it was, you know, because it, it's not the most important things, but it matters to kids if, if their school is falling apart. It makes a difference to them. It shows that they are, I mean, kids are, kids are concrete. They, if they go in and they see that their school is like falling apart, it's giving them the message that you're not that important, that education isn't very important because your school is a dump. Right. And, you know, yeah, the most important thing is to have good teachers. And, like, I would, before fixing up the schools, there's a lot of things I would want to pay for before fixing up the schools, like having more teachers, paying teachers better, 
getting more light, you know, because they don't have stuff like, I don't even know, schools now have like school nurses or librarians or music classes. I mean, a lot more before you do that, but it's important. So that was, so that was the schools. That was kind of interesting. So, okay. So the other thing besides the, um, some, so some other things I've been watching besides, um, gangster films. Oh, okay. This really cool film called, which is, it's Ken, it means friend and it's about these two girls it's a that um fall in love these kenyan girls and the film was banned in kenya because homosexuality is also illegal there right. so it's really sad because people in kenya didn't barely anybody in kenya even got to see it so what they did it for a week in order to make the film eligible to be entered in competitions. But it's really, I mean, it's a really beautiful film. And okay, like talk about sadness. It's, um, they get beat up by a group of, by a group of people, you know, they're like in, the, in this car and like some people from the town come out and like grab them and like drag them out and beat them up. Wow. And they get taken to jail and the, their parents are called and so, the some so then one set of the parents they come in and like smack their daughter in the face so yeah it was really really intense and that's what happens to a lot of people so but it was an amazing film and it has some really good music and i just got the soundtrack so if i get to play music again on our on here i would definitely play that yeah the, these websites now are really i know they are fighting it hard yeah, yeah, but you know, it's good because I just sort of feel like, oh man, what am I? Who, who's paying that much attention? But to what I do, but okay. So then, what I was also watching was the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is about a comedian. It's about a Jewish woman um, from a wealthy family that becomes a comedian, and it has amazing clothes. It takes place. In the late fifties, early early sixties, so it's pretty funny. Um, it had some obliviousness. One of the things she does is go. She goes on. She gets invited to go on tour. A black musician invites her to go on tour and open for him. And so that in itself didn't really make too much sense to me. Like, okay, why does a black musician? in 1960 want a white Jewish comedian to open for him like don't you want like a musician or something but so she does that and then it doesn't even halfway through the show and then they did this thing which I thought was really fucked up they made him be gay and in the closet and so there's a thing thing there's another thing that's a problem in film okay you talk about re representation okay we want mm -hmm. we want representation we want di we want diversity so it's like okay so here we're gonna put it's like they felt like okay some here's some diversity we're gonna put in a black gay guy and then we're gonna have him closeted and we're gonna get and we're gonna have him beat up which happens mm -hmm. and so he gets beat up and she finds out she finds him and she says she's like okay well let's go up to my hotel room and i'll help you i'll put some makeup on you and he goes man he's like i can't go to your hotel like basically she's been touring with these people for weeks and doesn't even realize that the band and the lead singer aren't even staying in the same hotel as her like how do you know so i mean you have a responsibility when you're telling people stories. And so I feel that the makers of Miss, and so, okay, so that happens. And then she gets, um, and so they depict real people, like one of the characters, they, Lenny, they have a character of Lenny Bruce in the comedian in, in there. He's, and so then, 
so then they go on hiatus because Shy, the musician, has to go like, I'm getting beat up. And so he opens back up at the Apollo Theater. So Mrs. Maisel is going to go open for him at the Apollo Theater. And she has no idea what that even means. It doesn't even register on her. On her. And then it shows... Mom's Mabley, who is paid, who is played by Wanda Sykes, and performing, and so Midge goes out. She's all excited because it's Mom's Mabley, and you know, she goes out. To, she goes out to listen to her, and then she sort of realizes. And it's not until then Mom's Mabley is really is really nice to her, but then her, Mrs. Mabley's manager is like, "Why are you here?" So that's when she suddenly like realizes, like, "Oh wow." I'm going to perform at the Apollo Theater. <laughs> and so the manager tells her to talk about Shy, the musician. She said, okay, well, you know, he's like their guy. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, he, he's family. They know him. They love him. Like, talk about going on tour. So she outs him, basically. She goes, and instead of, like, telling on-the-road stories, she starts saying about how... She starts talking about his vanity, and she says, she starts saying, like, and all this stuff, like, sort of like he's sort of like a prima donna, and she says, like, oh, yeah, you know, and he has a man for everything. Well, almost everything. She makes all these in you about him being gay. She, like, she outs him. That's what it's called. And so she says, and she doesn't, and, um... So she gets, she makes this comment like, okay, well, everybody else, like, shy. She says, like, clicks his Judy Garland heels and says, there's no place like Harlem. There's no place like Harlem. There's no place like Harlem. Mm. Which is actually really funny. But he's gay. She outs, I mean, she, and so the discussion, the online discussion is, and so she gets, she gets kicked off the tour. I mean, rightly so. And so... You know, so the series, the season ends with her crying, and so the like the online discussion is, people are saying, you know, oh well, what what she did wasn't 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 so bad. Like people wouldn't have, wouldn't have known what she was talking about. It's like of course they fucking knew. That's why they were laughing. I mean, and it's not like she like the Harlem. I she doesn't know. Like she knew. I mean, it's not like she is going to know more than this entire Harlem audience. So, it was, so that was sort of, people were saying, oh, it wasn't so bad. People wouldn't have known what she was talking about. Like, oh, please. And it's this, as a, somebody that looks at gay history a lot, you have to be able to look at things and figure out you have to be able to look at things and figure out what wasn't being said. And, like, of course that was gay code by, back then. Like, why do you think he was... A, why would people have been laughing? Mm. So, yeah. So they they really, I feel, kind of, kind of fucked up. Because you're sort of like, okay, well, if you're going to, like, introduce a black character into this show don't make him get beat up and outed by the main character who we're supposed to be sympath sympathetic to and like basically they should have just made it the story was about her going on the road and she should have been going on the road like basically it would have been they could have done it exactly the same with a white musician and made it it would have been the same story except it would have been accurate except it wouldn't it would have made a lot more sense basically like how do you like how are you supposed to have her not realize that everybody else is staying in a different hotel so that was the marvelous mrs mazel and it, but it has fabulous clothes fucking amazing so you know, so they fucked up. It's kind of like, um, you know, and, and as a gay person, you know, I mean, I get sick of every time of 
shows of, of gay characters just being introduced to get beat up, basically. Right, right. You know, there's more than that. And the other thing, or commit suicide. That happens a lot in stories about gay people. They get beat up and commit suicide. So, you know, I mean, we're deeper than that. We're more, we're more complex than that. And I'm not saying that these things don't happen because they, because they do, but you can make other stories. And if you're taking on, you have a responsibility. It's not that I'm saying you should, you know, like, no, you shouldn't only, you know, the world, I'm not saying don't tell stories about people that aren't you, but you have a responsibility to do it, thought to do it thoughtfully. So, yeah, like they were sort of like, okay, there we go. We're gonna have we're gonna have more diversity, and here's our diversity, and he's gonna get beat up and outed, and there you go. <laughs> the guy who played his manager was that was Sterling K. Brown, mm -hmm. somebody that he was really good. I I've never seen the show that the show that he's in, but I guess he's pretty famous. He was really good. He was a really good actor. So. You know, they had scenes in Las Vegas, and yeah, so that was interesting. Then the other thing was about, um, another show I've talked about was um, Gentleman Jack, which was about a gay woman in the 18th century who kept a diary, which she did in code, so people wouldn't find out but I mean again when people look at the diary you can tell it's not that it's not that things were unknown it's not that things wasn't weren't happening it's just that it wasn't written about so we need to I mean to me when you need you need to look at history and think like okay well did everybody not were people just too dumb to know like no, I don't think I don't think that's the case. I think we, you know, we need to look at the likelihood. You need to look at levels of of knowledge and inf and information in different communities and figure out what may have been happening and not assume that people didn't know stuff just because they didn't write it down. So, what's interesting okay there's something called unesco which is the united nations world it's art and writing that they believe is important to the heritage of the world and ann lister's diary has been named by the united nations as having world importance and because it, it's not just about her being gay it's about having such a detailed it's record of someone's life from that era because that's just very rare that not as many people were able to write or had the um, ability or and she and she was wealthy so that's the thing that I've talked about before that you need to try and out with history is you need to try and find the records of people's lives that were not reported and she you know she was still nervous enough about the whole thing to write in code and so a lot of people just wouldn't have been able to write anything at all because they wouldn't have felt safe doing that so okay so that was pretty that was pretty interesting interesting too and hello to james the groom the new groom james pinson what's going on james yes Yes. Congratulations. Yes, it was very, very cool. Oh, you were there? Yeah, of course I was. Oh, okay. Okay. And Darcy. Hello, hello, Darcy. What's up, Darcy? How you doing? Up, Darcy. So, we're going to be doing the Christmas, Christmas gifts at Faith Food Friday. Okay. So, yeah, and the Christmas... Um, bat the christmas boxes like oh man talk about kids so what were there weren't enough toys not enough toys were delivered and so people are afraid that there's going to be a riot or something if people if people get there and, and we're out of toys 
So I don't think you guys will be out of toilet. I think it'll work out just fine. I well, one of the places. Well, we were because it's not. People have already signed up, so uh-huh. we know how many toys we need. So. Uh, one of the organizations that was supposed to be bringing us toys, I guess, was pretty disorganized and didn't have them. And so one of the directors went online and like posted for help. And then what do you know? So then some other organization came over with a bunch with a bunch of toys. But yeah, she was really worried because um, people get re- and so they're having they're trying to figure it out so that the toys are sort of like the so people can't see i mean they're wrapped so people can't see them and so somebody's just gonna like bring out the toy and hand it to the parents so hopefully people won't be like oh i want that oh th- i want that like yeah right so <sighs> yeah that's something because you know like when we don't have enough of something people are like you don't have enough of this I'm like, you know you don't have enough of this it's like well because we didn't get it not high Right, it's because right, we right. don't have if you if you don't have it, we don't have it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I have a good time. Nice, nice. Yes, yes. So this is the last global history night of the yeah. year. Well, not until next year. We got a whole nother year. Yeah, we do. We do. And Just we'll... technically like a month away. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, okay. actually, less than that. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, because, okay, we, yeah, now I can't keep track of, are we, are we working for first and third or second and fourth? We're going to do second and fourth. Second and fourth. Because, you know, it's going to be New Year's, New Year's Eve. And okay. That everybody get their, we're doing all our stuff out of their system. And then yeah. Second week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you got any shows coming up? Any plans? No. I, someone wanted me to do something, but I told them no. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be in Sacramento on the 21st, but I was like. Yeah. I want to do it. Yeah. So actually, no, I want to try to keep the rest of the time yeah. for me just to do what I want to do. So. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You having Christmas with your family? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Nice. Nice. Do you have cousins and stuff come over too? I don't know. i got to see who my dad has coming over. Okay, but you have it at your house? Yeah, well, yeah. my parents. Are. Yeah, your parents. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah your yeah, parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely there. I'm going to some. I'm going to some friends' houses, but I might I might go into San Francisco too. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So okay, everybody. All right. We'll be back in two weeks. In two weeks. And we'll happy be New back. Year! Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good night. All right. <laughs>